Hello everyone, in this video, prepare to be blessed by the ministry of Apostle Joshua Selman. Prepare to pray, prepare to receive prophetic declarations, prepare to long stretch in prayer tonight and let your expectations be known to God. Let your heart be opened and with faith pray these prayers that will be coming from the man of God. Stay connected as you listen. And God bless you. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Every time you see people serving you and sowing into you, and you are laughing, say, Kai, that means I'm a big man. You are not wise. You should turn quickly and start finding a way. There is he that scattered and increased. There is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty. I can't be a failure in life. No way. Not when there is one career of an anointing. Hallelujah. When Pastor Biodu was going to bring Dr. Myers Munro, do you know what they did? What I mean, um, um, what's his name? The, Mike Mudok. Do you know what they did? One month before he came, they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs. See after me, honor. As soon as he was entering his hotel room, a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130, The entrance of thy word is that life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, Father, thank you for tonight. I know you will do something in my life that has never been done before. Oh, bless him because his presence is in this place. Manda grasa balakapo. Zipa kumbria stabaladabako rata krestibara. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified lift your hands and say Lord let your word come tonight to set me free to deliver me to prosper me to enlighten me that I will rule in the day and rule in the night. That I will be a true ambassador of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's great to have everyone around this night. Good evening. Just walk up to ten people. Give them a big hug. Tell them it's good to have you around. Hallelujah. Why are you in a hurry to sit down tonight? Hallelujah. Don't worry, I understand it's a revelation that you are seated with Christ. Hallelujah. Can we worship God for just two minutes? <laughs> Na kawo ya bo Sergin salama Kene sergin salama Sergin salama Kawo ya bo Sarkin salama Kaine 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 
You are the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace. You have come to bless us tonight. Let your word bless us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. The Bible says in His presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures at His right hand forevermore. Tonight I will be teaching on something that I believe will change your life. Hallelujah. I know that every message that comes here is very powerful. But tonight I want to share with you something very personal and I believe it will bless you. Hallelujah. I, when God told me about this message, I didn't know what to call it. And then I had a dream this morning and I saw the title, Commanding Results. I didn't write it. I saw it. I want to share with you something powerful tonight, if you will believe. Make champions out of this message, my father. You see, many of you, when you hear the word like this, you just think it's a caption to motivate you. No, no. To the extent that I lacked what message would encapsulate, what title. And I said, Lord, you have to help me. And while I slept in the night, I just saw it. Call it commanding results. Hallelujah. What makes certain people to move in levels of results levels of power the manifestations of the word of God what makes certain ministries prosper and increase what makes certain individuals look like angels and gods upon the earth hallelujah what makes others very blessed and prosperous what makes others influential and command such degree of power and grace from the throne commanding results never forget this message for the rest of your life please find our yesterdays open up your ears your heart your spirit your life and receive this message tonight oh 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 oh, oh, oh. You are faithful. You are 
are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are all this, Lord. Your word is true. I believe. And Lord, we believe. We have seen with our eyes the manifestations of your word. The ancients have told us that this was the secret of the power that commanded authority in their time. Tonight, Lord, as we explore this ancient book, I pray that the potency of your power will be made manifest in our lives. Lord, I pray that we will not disregard this revelation tonight. I pray that we will believe it. We will respect it. We will obey it. And Lord, we are sure that you will perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 21. Matthew 21 Say in the name of Jesus The word of God Is making me a sign And a wonder Like the ancients of old The generals of old The mighty men of old I am making history By the power of the word I believe it. I respect it. In Jesus' name. Matthew 21. I start reading from verse 18. Matthew 21. If you are there, say Amen. Amen. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Say he was hungry. So the first thing we see in this chapter is that there is hunger. Hallelujah. And when he saw a fig tree along the way, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Say after me, but leaves. Hmm. Only. And said to it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. The Bible says Jesus was walking. And then he saw a tree because he was hungry. Hallelujah. So every hungry man is satisfied when he eats of the fruit of a tree. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says that Jesus saw a tree from afar. It looked wonderful, green. And Jesus came to it and found out that it had only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Only leaves and no fruit. And he was angry. It didn't look like he loved that tree. Because he cursed the tree out of anger. He said, let no fruit come out of you again. Why do you keep deceiving people as though you are a tree that is blossoming? And you make hungry people come to you. Only to find out that there are only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Okay, thank you. I am sure that Jesus was not the only one who had been deceived by that tree. That tree had a track record of deceiving many people by looking so green. Hallelujah. And every hungry person that was passing would see that tree and believe that that tree would satisfy its hunger. The Bible says when Jesus came close, he thought the leaves were in, the fruit was inside and he pushed the evergreen leaves. No fruit. What kind of tragedy is this that a tree can grow to a full size? Have, I mean, uh, leaves all over and then there is no fruit. And Jesus caused it in anger. Hallelujah. That tree reminds me of many lives and many believers. We look anointed. We talk anointed. We act anointed. Hallelujah. Reminds me of many ministries. 
reminds me of many men of God, many pastors and apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Reminds me of all kinds of people, many leaders. They look like they are green. They look attractive. Hallelujah. And then you come near only to find out that there is no food that can satisfy the hunger of people. You will be blessed tonight, oh. You will be blessed tonight. That's a contrast because you see, Jesus never said he is glorified when you have leaves. John 15 verse 8, he says, Sharing is the Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. This is what brings glory to the Father. Not that you become green. Hallelujah. Not that you just become green and blossom, but you bear fruit. Hallelujah. Because when the hungry come, they are looking. The Bible says Jesus was hungry. If you were not hungry, nothing will make him to look for a tree. Because he was passing and he was hungry. And then he saw a tree that attracted him by the leaves. And he came to the tree only to be surprised that there was no fruit. Say, I will bear fruit. Much fruit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so why are certain lives like this? You find out that there is no fruit whatsoever. Listen to me. If you have been serving the Lord for years and years and there is nothing in your life as a sign of a fruit, something is wrong. The end of faith is a performance and a manifestation. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed. He said, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work, he is able to perform it to the end. So, the life of a Christian, eventually in your journey, some fruit should begin to manifest that can attest to the fact that you are planted. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. How are we sure he meditates day and night? Because eventually he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. Other trees receive their nourishment from the rain, but this guy receives his own from under. He is planted by the rivers. As a result, he yields his fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. But the Bible tells us that we see someone mimicking that blessed man with only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. The Bible says he shall be compared to a tree that is planted how will men who are afar, because they may not see the river that he's planted close to. So how will they see? He will yield his fruit in season. Yes, we agree that, okay, it takes a while for a believer to crystallize the word of God and believe it and absorb it. But eventually, there should be a sign. The Bible says, and Elijah prayed. And he told his servant, go and check. He went. He said, there is no sign. And he prayed. At the seventh time, there was a sign. There will always be a sign that lets us know whether you are growing. Whether you are commanding power and authority. If it is the real tongues you have been praying for years, something in your life, there should be a signature upon your life that there is progress. Are you listening to me? If the Bible says the word of God is able to make you wise and you have truly been meditating on that word, eventually we should see the fruits of divine wisdom. Are you listening to me? The Bible promises us certain things as believers when we walk in the Lord. If you have been walking and living by the word truly, a time must come when men can testify and say there is an evidence. Say after me, evidence. There must be an evidence. Noah told men that God told him that rain was coming, true or false. It took a long time. But eventually, 
the Bible says that God vindicated him. Abraham was a man who trusted God. And even when he was 75 years, hallelujah, a promise was made to him. And he waited 25 years for that promise. But eventually, the end of faith is a performance. If you, if you have put your trust and your faith in the word of God, eventually, there must be a performance. Every area of your life cannot be a barren land forever. Are you listening to me? If one area of your life is receiving results, it's a sign that the other area will come. So God will encourage you. If academically you are not doing well, spiritually you are not doing well, health-wise you are not doing well, suddenly when you begin to find out that the anointing of the Spirit is at work in you, what does it tell you? It means fruit is already being produced. Is that correct? And it will motivate you to begin to trust His word in other areas. But where every of your life is a dead, a barren wilderness, something is wrong. Are you listening to me? There are many churches and many people that have given excuses forever. They pray more than anybody else. They fast more than anybody else. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of devotionals circulating in town. But I want to ask you a question tonight. How long do you want to watch the leaves on your tree? When will that leaf begin to translate into fruit? That the hungry can come and begin to eat. Because, you see, it is deceit. Jesus saw a tree and was attracted. And when he came to the tree, he just found leaves. And there was no fruit. And he was angry. And he cursed the tree. He said, may fruit never come out of you again. Hallelujah. Two secrets tonight. Number one. You want to command results in your life. Number one, you must have absolute faith in God. Absolute faith in God. Demonstrated by total obedience. Absolute faith. Don't just write faith in God. Absolute faith in God. Absolute faith in the word of God. Demonstrated by total obedience. Unwavering obedience. Hmm. Absolute faith. That you believe that God is faithful and that God is able. The thousands of promises that are scattered in this Bible, God cannot be joking with you. Hallelujah. Absolute faith. Listen, we have ended up complicating Christianity. But do you know, I, I noticed that most of the people that shook their generation, most of them were not even educated people. They took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible, John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou, let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope, not faith. Many believers hope in God. They don't have faith in God. They just hope that one day in the sweet by and by, Verse 12, John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, who is speaking here? This is Jesus Christ. The works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works. Say greater works. And greater works shall he do. This is Jesus Christ talking here. Not an angel. If he sent a prophet, would have said, oh, the prophet didn't hear well. Are you listening to me? Jesus himself said this. Verily, verily, 
I say unto you, he that believes. And Smith Wigglesworth found this and said, Lord, are you serious about this? That an uneducated person like me, if I can believe, if I can believe, and God said, yes. Catherine Kuman found this. Amphi McPherson found this. Generals of old found this. Verily, verily. He that believes, not he that is born again, not he that is praying in tongues, he that believes, absolute trust, The works that I do, the works that I do, he shall also do. He said, and greater works. Greater works. Many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation. Brother, greater means greater. You went to school. Greater means greater. Greater works. That means if you are not seeing greater works, what is the diagnosis? You do not believe. Now, let me tell you something. When it comes to spiritual growth, you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of God has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you. When I was studying this scripture, I said, Lord, does that mean I don't believe in you? God says, simple, to the degree to which you are seeing my works. And I knew I had to accept it. Because brothers and sisters, I have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody. There are some people, some things are possible for. Are you listening to me? There are some people standing and praying, Oh Lord, bring a boat. And then we see others get on that water and begin to move. The fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing, it kills the excuse that is God that is responsible. Are you listening to me? He that believes in me. The works. I remember one of the first times I read this scripture, I was studying Pastor Chris's message and Kenyon on faith. We are going to prepare for crusades. Never had that experience. We didn't know what to expect. But we took this word and said, Lord, this is true. How many of you truly believe in God? How many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said, Those who didn't even affect them, they just sat down and were looking. And he said, God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying, God is faithful and I move forward. There are, listen, there are many of you who have been sitting, grumbling, shouting at God, saying, God, you are not true. Do you know you are one over how many people who are saying God is faithful? If you say God is not faithful, there are angels whose voices are louder than your own. They, it will overshadow your own belief in an instant. One word, holy. Are you listening to me? Do you believe God's word? Many of you have been reading your Bible. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are many pastors, there are many ministries who only open the Bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people. They don't believe. It's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on Sunday or on Wednesday or on Friday or whatever the meeting days are. There are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God. Tonight I'm asking you, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you can you take it with childlike simplicity and say, Lord, I believe. Do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you? There are many of you from the time you got to final year, your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe God. Whatever I fear in my life, the faith and the revelation of God's word has not entered there because perfect love casts out fear. 
So if you are afraid of the future, let me assure you that the revelation of God's word that secures your future has not entered you yet. Are you listening to me? Absolute trust. Father Abraham and the generals of old, these guys believed God and there was a performance. And we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith. You came to ABU and you believed God that you will be a success. Then your first result, 1.5, seven carryovers. Hey, hey, God, you said this, boy. You just said, Lord, I believe you. You just said, Lord, I believe you. You just said, no matter what, Lord, your word is true. And I know that this is not over. Hallelujah. Your uncle promised you that it's going to be blessing you. Suddenly, your uncle said, I've changed my mind. He said, ah, but uncle, he said, the only constant thing in life is change. I have changed my mind. And suddenly, fear grips you. I tell you, friends, fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life. For when the word of God truly comes, it drives out fear. Say, I refuse to fear. There are so many believers living in the world. We confess God's word. We believe God's word in quotes. But then, the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid. And then there is no performance in our lives. Those who command results. There are many of you that believe you are carrying the healing anointing. You have not prayed for one sick body because you are afraid of embarrassment. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. Hallelujah. I have a passion to get you to a point where you believe the word of God. Because the Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. I challenge myself every time I say, Lord, why am I seeing that I, I, I was doing a Bible study with someone yesterday. Day before, okay, yesterday. I think Sandra. Yes, we're having Bible study. And we were talking about the life, the ministry of Jesus Christ. And tears filled my eyes while I was talking. Because I couldn't deny the fact that my life was far from the Jesus life that I saw. This guy was a man of faith. Nothing moved him. He believed the Father. He believed the Word. He had such audacity. He commanded results. Believe us what is wrong with us. Hallelujah. I tell you the truth. It's easy to feel like you are trying and I understand you are doing your best. But it does not negate the fact that this revelation has not yet entered us. Because when the word enters you, I tell you there is a performance. I will die believing this thing I'm sharing with you. How much of God do you believe? Many of us have our spiritual life then we have our normal life, the one that works with wisdom. Let's be wise, let's reason now, don't be stupid. So you, we make bold claims, but when we step out there, there are all kinds of fears, and we begin to patch the word of God and, and manifest auxiliary faith. The Lord is asking you a question tonight, do you have absolute faith in you? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can answer and say, Lord, I have absolute faith in you. Maybe I can say I have faith. But it may not be absolute. Because I know what absolute faith has done in thy Bible. I've read my Bible very well. And men who had absolute faith, they rose beyond limitations and shook their generation. They had no internet. Are you listening to me? No people that produce posters. Look at the life of Jesus, for instance. The Bible says in the book of Mark that Jesus was in a room and he said the whole city came and gathered in front of the room. What, what kind of result will a man command like this? 
There are all kinds of excuses we keep giving ourselves. Read the Bible. The, see, the secret of ENI is found in Mark 1, 2, 3. Go and read it. The Bible says Jesus went to Capernaum. There, multitudes heard about him and they came. Jesus went to the desert. The same multitudes came. Jesus went by the seaside. The same multitudes came. Jesus climbed the mountain. The same multitudes came. Same result. Same power. He casted out devils. He healed the sick. He preached the word. He touched the word. The performance. Look at me. All of you look up. If you were to suddenly see the vision of Jesus Christ, the real Jesus, and he stood here, and Jesus suddenly made an announcement and said, I am giving you 10 minutes. The first 10 people who come to me, whatever their needs are, it will be met. How many of you will check your withon before coming? Why are you not doing that to me? Simple. I, you, you do not yet trust that my level of competence has gotten to that place. Are you listening to me? If you are hungry for God, you have to get the truth and press to it. I assure you, listen to me, brothers and sisters. If Jesus Christ walked here right now, before you finish, the ministers will gap you because they will fly on his leg and say, Jesus, you don't know how I've waited. I already have my list. I'm not about to write. And you just drop it. Every time people heard about Jesus, they started laughing. You know why? They knew the result had come. They just started laughing. Their own issue was to get to see him. But your issue is not to see me. Your issue is, that, is to ascertain Lord, now that I've seen Joshua help him, let there be grace that is available this night to at least be able to meet some of my needs. I tell you, you don't know how it pains me when people come up here and say, I wrote seven prayer points in a miracle service. Two have been answered. In my mind, I say, okay. Seven minus two is what? Help me. Seven minus two is what? If you drop your prayer point directly to the person Christ, how many will be met? Tell me, how many will be met? This is the kind of hunger and honesty that will drive you to the anointing. I refuse to give excuses. It simply means there is a light that I have not seen. There is a depth of anointing I have not stepped into. There is a dimension of the operation of the Spirit that I have not gotten to yet. That's why whether you say Apostle Josh, Bishop Josh, I won't be misled with all of those nonsense. There is work to be done. Are you listening to me? Mm. Those of you who are already confident, I'm laying hands on three people. I'm laying hands on five people. You stopped reading your Bible, that's why. Pick up your Bible and read it again and be ashamed of your pride. And find out that there is work to be done. I tell you, if ministers knew this, the Bible would be the best tool that they will have. I refuse to give excuses. Are you listening to me? That my life will make such a mark. See, we have dwelt in this unbelief to a point that when anybody is exceptional, people say, this guy is not real. Oh, be careful. This Joshua Selman guy is not real. I'm warning you now. Tomorrow, don't say it's any kind of thing. Because people are so complacent. The average pastor, there are three things that many men of God are looking for and they'll be satisfied in ministry. One, to have a crowd. Two, to at least be able to say something from this Bible. It doesn't matter what it is. Number three, and then let there be at least just one person who will fall. They say, you think I'm playing? Oh, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Is that what you think will shake the world? That's not uncommon enough. We are talking about commanding authority over territories. One miracle that, let me tell you something. In the days of the generals, all newspapers was about the generals and the fearful miracles they did. Right now, when last... 
the man must pay for advert. If you see advert in the newspaper, he paid for it. To say, okay, my program is around. Please just check. Are you listening to me? There are some people in Zaria that have never even heard that there is anything called koinonia. What are we boasting for? Look at Elijah. He stands somewhere. The whole city, the whole city didn't hear him. He just said there shall not be rain. The whiplash of drought started making people find out who is responsible for this. And say one guy, Elijah, one man like this. And the gist started spreading. Elijah, who is he? He said, go and look for him now. And the king says, because the king's ego is, is spoiled, he's embarrassed. He says, go and catch that man. 50 people march and stand and Elijah is taking fresh air on the mountain and they interrupt his fellowship. This was a man like you. Are you listening to me? Old covenant for you new creation. Old covenant. Elijah looks and says, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. Right now we have different ways of speaking. When you stand, you say, if I be standing in the authority and moving in the office, the department and the office of the Christ, let it come. Fire doesn't come. You're not getting it. We're just teaching congregations English and vocabulary. We're just having a brilliant and an educated but powerless church. Well, right now there's improvement. Everybody is falling everywhere. Everybody is falling everywhere. Just watch TV. A man of signs and wonders. Before they say anything, people just fall. And that's all you have to show the world. Something is wrong. That's all you have to show the world. That a man just fell down. And then all, now prophecy itself is even him. Come, you are, you are Gladys. You are from the east. Your mother is sick. Your uncle traveled. You are a Navy student. And then the congregation claps. What, what? How? Look, real prophets. This is what they say. There is coming a problem in Zaria, but I stop it. That's a real mandate. That you stand and tell the people what Satan wants to do, and you stop it. The creative power of the spoken word. We just have a group of revelatory people. Even the native doctors can't create. They have helped to give you the one to reveal. When are we going to get angry that we are going to begin to command territorial results? Listen. If two dead people, how many? If two dead people rise in Koinonia, I assure you, if you come by 2.30 next Friday, you will stand outside. Critics, look at the Bible. The Bible says people came and filled where Jesus was sitting. Mark chapter 2. And the Bible says others were standing outside. When Jesus saw the fate of the man that they brought, the Bible says the scribes who came early and were seated in front. They said... Why are you forgiving his sins? If they came late, they would have been outside. Even then, they rushed and came early for that meeting. Jesus had no nonsense. He climbed the mountain. Brothers and sisters, human beings like you stayed with a man for three days. On the mountain. The closest thing to what we are supposed to do is what government officials and politicians are doing. Go to the house of politicians. You will see a man who has five or six children sitting outside. You say, why is he? I'm waiting for his excellency. That's it's called hunger. The man has fruits. Where he got it is irrelevant. He shall has fruits. When believers come to church and after one hour, they go, ah, it's not true. I tell you the truth, it's a sign of lack of true fire. In the days of Amphie McPherson, listen, she had a program called Stretcher Only. Meaning, if you are not sick, you are not invited for that meeting. What is our, the, name the kind of conferences we have right now. B 
business special for only the ones that are successful only you are not successful you are not a businessman walk outside the people are already successful pastor don't lie it's not your anointing that is making them successful these guys suffered in the bowels of time and got their money and then you stand and say receive they have it already somebody is budgeting to buy a car of 5 million he has gotten 4.8 you are speaking speaking what takes two months salary to complete and buy his car If I can speak to you and tomorrow they give you a car, I'm a real prophet. Don't go and meet somebody that's already tried. If I meet Pastor Williams, I say, hey, Jim, tomorrow, of course. Common sense tells me he's. Ah. Am I challenging you? I know you don't like the message. Sorry you came. You must hear it this night. Koinonia, where hunger is put in you again. See, a man called St. Patrick. Let me tell you something about St. Patrick. Hallelujah. St. Patrick was such a powerful man. He was a dangerous man. A snake beat in Ireland. A snake beat a, a woman's daughter. And she was crying. And St. Patrick was just meandering around the street. And he saw her. He said, Madam, why are you crying? She said, a snake beat her. He said, a snake beat you. Where? Where did the snake go to? Hallelujah. And they showed him the forest. He entered and sat for the snake. He held it. He said, you and your kind, I banish you from this land. Till today, there's no snake in Ireland. Hallelujah. The king got to hear Jesus about St. Patrick. He said, who is that man? They said, that guy is, we don't even know what to call him. And the king said, what sign will he show me? The king's son died six months. He said, go and call St. Patrick. Six months. They had put him in the grave. When St. Patrick came, true life story, St. Patrick looked. He signed his signature and wrote St. Patrick on the grave. He said, dig it out. That's how they carried that boy out. What are we boasting from? It was St. Patrick that began what you hear in Hubert Angel's channel. Christ in me. Christ beside me. Christ before me. Christ above me. Today we say a man of faith and power and he comes with his big stomach. No revelation. Close heavens. Every kind of thing. He says, well, I was in my hotel room. Or God performed. And we waste people's time Telling them the price of suits that we are buying. I'm challenging you tonight. Commanding results. Do you believe in the Lord? There was a monk. They were trying to build their church. A Catholic monk. And I think they made a mistake in the measurement. And then they came and the wood was short. The guy just held the wood and started moving. That's how he drew it and completed it. I tell you the truth. Anthony McPherson will organize programs. The only people invited are those on stretchers. That's a real miracle service, not what we are doing. Charles and Francis Hunter, they work close to some of these dimensions. In a single meeting, they raised 100 wheelchairs. Brothers and sisters, replace all the seats that are in this place. Just imagine in your mind there are wheelchairs and just move them here. Imagine if everybody here were crippled. This is the kind of service. There are many men of God, if you invite them in a service and they see three people on wheelchair, they just do as if they didn't see. I know my God will heal. They are laying hands and they will just drop the person. And then you say, what manner of man is Jesus? He made the lame to walk. I wonder what the lame person is singing. And the shadows of Peter. Men lined up in the streets. Because they said, Peter is coming, Peter is coming. And I can imagine a woman, please come from bed. And Peter says, bless you, bless you. Suddenly you are hearing shouts. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. If we have half of that anointing 
I will put this thing will be a basket. A bowl. And then you put it. You write my name Joshua. And then my picture will be here. You come and touch it. Lick it. Put it in your wallet. Put it in your purse. Bath with the pour water on it and go and bath. Madness. All those things because we do not understand. Women shook their generations. Right now, there are men of God who are on TV, but nobody knows them. They air three times a week. As they are saying, now we thank you for this broadcast. You cannot even remember who preached again. The only thing you remember is gloss suit, as if they printed it in a, in a printing press. Noise. Leaves with no fruit. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you? Because we need to rise, friends. This is an apostolic generation. You cannot be satisfied with what we are seeing. What we are doing now is joke. I tell you, it's not ministry yet. Archbishop Benson Idahosa. He was driving. Okay, they were driving him. An armed robber stopped them. Back, back, stop. The driver was afraid. Idahosa just opened his mouth. He told the person to open the door for him first. He came out. The armed robber, lie down, lie down. He just looked at them. He said, One of three things must happen to you this night. Either you will be paralyzed, you will be blind, or you will die. But one must happen this night. Will land robbers ever? Spokane was called the cleanest city during the time of John G. Lake. You know the way they admit people in Shika? That's how you come to his hospital. You collect a form. To prove that you had the healing anointing, you go and bring seven people that you healed. That's how he admits. If you say you are sensing the call of God upon your life, he you say go and bring seven people with what used to happen to them and what you have done. Then he will consider whether you are qualified to be his staff. Can you imagine? That was the yastic. Now everybody, a man with a strong healing anointing, I came all the way, 50 kilometers, to tell you, your... while they are talking, the demons are saying, now wow. Saying, before, when men were around, there was fire. You know these demons have been around since. They knew the fire upon these men. And they ask one another, they say, ah, when these guys died, they didn't transfer anything. And all of those men, they were called brother this, brother that. Now you call Joshua Selman apostle. You know, I fear that name because I just remember Apostle Paul, Apostle Smith Wigglesworth, Apostle John G. Lake. Apostle St. Patrick, Apostle Josh, for where? For where? You won't deceive me. No way. But many of you are already parading sons and daughters. You say, Call me Pastor this. Go and sit down. And sit down in one place and gather yourself together and first ask what God has called you to do. Say in the name of Jesus, I believe. And yet the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, it says so that they without us. That means our generation is still coming. The Bible says this, do you know before Smith Wigglesworth died? I'll share with you some stories today. Before Smith Wigglesworth died, when he was laying hands on Lester Sumro, he told him something. He said, look, make sure you don't die with your anointing. He said, look for young men that are serious and transfer this anointing to them. And then he laid hands on him and began to prophesy. He said, I see a generation. A generation that what we have done will look like a step out of the cave compared to what they are doing. Apostle Babalola, CAC. You see, there are many denominations today that don't, do not even believe what their founders live for.
Apostle Babalola, he was said, listen, he was said that that guy was so powerful. A time came when he was preaching and he started lifting, literally. See, the water that, the concept of holy water came from him. He was thirsty, praying on a mountain. And there was no water and he struck the rock and said, let water come. Man, they are the type you say men to. Not, 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 not the, the, the people who are saying men. We are, we are called, you call us children. Am I challenging you? Do you know Apostle Babalola was moving? There was a council. Now, this one, I attended a pastor's conference by Apostle A.T.B. Williams in Kafanchan. Emmanuel Kure's conference. And he, and he was saying this. He said that Apostle Babalola, when they wanted to call him, when people said there's a gentleman that had the fire of God, there were certain elders, like seven or eight of them, they said they don't believe he's called. Look at the miracles that this man was doing. They said they are not yet convinced that he has the anointing. In other words, this guy is still a joker. He's playing ministry. All of them prayed. And a few said, actually, they have received confirmation. The elders refused. They say, until God speaks to every one of them, one by one, before they were agreed. One day, they were praying together. And there was a madman running and disturbing people in the street. And Apostle Babalola just came out from the forest. He was just moving in the city. Not going for a program. No protocol. No mic. He was just meandering around the street. And that guy came out. And people were running yard matches and was driving people. And then the elders were watching. The Lord told them to watch. And they were watching through the window. And Apostle Baba, when the madman came close to him, he said, but you are not mad now. He collected his matches. He said, sit down here, please. That was how those men confirmed that God really called this guy. Now, how do we confirm that God has called a man? Once you just see a guy that is handsome, he looks like Eliab, you just say, surely surely and see you see ministers and the body of Christ there is no pressure whatsoever on us to press for more you look at a man of God and see that he's absolutely satisfied you even hear some men of God say I'm so fulfilled and he's showing you his watch I'm so fulfilled There are sick people coming. There are oppressed people coming. And Jesus caused that victory. He said, because you have deceived me. You made me to come all the way. You made me to do everything I'm doing. And you have been deceiving many like that. Let me tell you, there are many people that God himself would dethrone out of ministry. And out of certain places of honor. Because if we keep deceiving God's people and claiming, come for miracle service. Are the people really receiving miracles? Or do we just celebrate one miracle, a fractured hand, God healed? When I was watching what the media people played, I tell you, I, I was happy, but I was angry at the same time. Or a robot healed people to a point that he was tired. They just prayed on a mountain and told people to come and touch it. That's the real me. Now, people drink one gallon of water and nothing happens. He said, drink it, prophetic water. You drink it. You, 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 they say, take, come and buy a special. I saw a man of God praying for one woman. The anointing oil is like this, 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 uh, uh, so, so, uh, this pure tag bottle. He poured some on her head. Told her to pour some. Hey, what men of God do to people? And ask her to drink everything. That's how she drank in my presence. It was on, on TV. Drank everything. The man said, yes. If you drink oil like that, you will be sick. You will be very sick. We spend over 30 minutes trying to minister to one person. Look at Jesus. I will be made clean. Come on. He saw the demons. Go! And they left. What is wrong? Am I? Is the only me that is having this anger. Many of you are saying, I won't be a man of God. Please turn and face these people. Say, I believe the word of God. The second key. 
Your faith can be seen, friends. The second key. I will share this quickly and we will pray. This is one of the reasons why many people do not gain the anointing to command results. I call it the law of honor. Write it quickly. One day the Lord showed me a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews 7 verse 1. If you have been sleeping, wake up because your life is about to change. Hebrews. So open your eyes. Open your ears. And then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes, open your ears, and then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Let me show you, this is one of the biggest secrets of my life. I want to share with you something that will change your life tonight. I tell you, if you believe this, if you believe this, you will be changed forever. Behold, I show you a mystery. Lord, open our eyes. Respect what you are about to hear. <laughs> Verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and what? Blessed him. Number 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Three, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest continually. Verse 6, But he whose descent is not counted from them, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him of all the promises. Verse 7, read with me together, one to go. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Read it one more time. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed. Stand up. Please stand up. Just stand up. Pray a prayer in one minute. And say, Lord, my life is about to change as I hear this revelation. I humble myself. Let your word come as light. Please pray this prayer just one minute. Because God is about to change lives right now. God is about to shift levels. Please pray. Oh yes, doors will open forever for certain people. Lord, I pray. I pray. This revelation has changed my life. It has changed the lives of many. I pray that men will be commanders of results. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Look at this. Listen to me. Let me give you certain revelations. Number one. You must realize that in the kingdom of God, listen, listen to me. The anointing is carried in the kingdom of God through human vessels. Are you listening to me? Human vessels are the carriers of God's power, of God's unction, of God's ability. And the Bible says without contradiction. In other words, this one, you can't argue on it. You can't preach another message about it. He said the lesser is blessed of the greater. Abraham is the father of what many people call the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible makes us to understand that the king came, I mean that Abraham came from the slaughter of certain people and he spoiled them. The Bible says he came and he took a tenth of the offering. And he blessed one man called Melchizedek. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Melchizedek looked at Abraham and blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, possessor of the Most High. And Paul is giving us a revelation here using the life of Melchizedek and Abraham. And he told him, he said, Without contradiction, in the realm of the spirit, it is only the lesser. 
Are you listening to me? It's only one who is higher, who has the capacity. Pastor, please come. Who has the capacity to take you and to lift you into his higher place of anointing. Follow me. In the realm of the spirit, listen to me. Only one who is higher than you has the capacity to draw you. And the limit to which he can draw you is the limit of his anointing. No man can draw you above his anointing. Are you listening to me? That's why when God wanted to swear, he looked for one who was higher than him. So he could submit to him and say, please help me swear to these people. When he did not find anybody, he said, oh, since I'm the only one, I swear by myself. Are you listening to me? Powerful principle. Listen, listen. I want to give you the unbeatable secret. The unbeatable secret of the anointing, growing in the anointing and financial prosperity. When you want to rise, you don't sow to people lower than you. They can't lift you. When you get to your wealthy place, this is called charity. Are you listening to me? You sow upwards and then you are called higher. Are you following me now? Without contradiction. It is only the lesser that receives from the greater. Hallelujah. I want to show you the principle of walking in the anointing. I never allow any man who is higher or greater than me do anything in my presence that I can do. For many of you, you have been misled and deceived that you only give that honor to your pastor or your spiritual father. And many of you have passed anointings that can set you free. But because of the stereotype of ministry, it has to be me, my pastor, my father, my this and that. Listen to me. And without contradiction, the lesser is empowered and lifted to the realm of the greater. When I saw this scripture, I repented from talking about men of God and people. I want to show you why the doors are shut for many people and many ministries and many individuals. Hallelujah. Listen to me. In 2004, I wanted the anointing so badly. I had been seeing the manifestation of God's spirit in my life. And Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. Are you listening to me? Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. I left Zaria and I ran to Joss. The first day, there was a mighty manifestation. Hundreds of thousands of people came. Are you listening to me? The second day, I was angry. You know why? Because I didn't serve in that crusade. I knew that when you honor a man, listen to me. Honor opens the door of any man's anointing. You will never receive of the anointing of a man you dishonor and criticize. I went, pastor, listen, for six hours, I was standing in that crusade ground. You know what I was doing? I was looking for what to do. There was nothing to be done. Later on, I saw them pushing people who were sick. I said, beautiful. I said, can I join them? They said, I'm not part of the committee. They trained them. I said, committee or no committee. I came from Zaria with a hunger. I was pushing the people and I was praying in tongues. Nobody knew me then. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I pushed the wheelchairs, I stood there. People were packed full. And I stood there. I said, Lord, I honor this servant of yours. I know that this man is great. I didn't give him any seat. But I honored him in my spirit. I said, Lord, I believe this guy is a career of an anointing. I respect it. I believe it. I covet it. When I stood there, Renard Bonke finished preaching. And they, they prayed for people for salvation. They wanted to pray for baptisms. Then, I had not started praying for people for baptism. And I said, Lord, how can one man pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the Holy Ghost? And I stood. I said, Lord, I believe. And I will never forget, Renard Bonke was going to drink water. Suddenly, I looked up. And for the first time, I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bed that would be as big as this auditorium. Was just hovering around the people. You know, his crusades, you stand. Suddenly, 
I saw it had silvery wings. And the, the Lord just took me to this scripture where Elisha told Elijah, if you can see me, if you can see me as I'm taking up, suddenly I saw that bed. I thought other people were seeing it. But I realized that I was the only one who was seeing it. Do you know, by the time I finished the encounter with that manifestation of the Holy Spirit, I turned and I found out that I was already back in the stage. I don't know when I turned to face and from that day an anointing came upon my life there is no one I pray for for the baptism who does not get filled with the Holy Ghost are you listening to me many of you have cultivated the attitude of dishonoring people I will never forget one time that I went to go and buy was it sugar cane or something and I saw two old women many of you will not honor them because they are not your pastor and I saw the old women, just 10 or 15 naira, I paid for them. And they said, you know how old women bless. They were speaking. And I didn't hear what they said, but I will never forget one thing one of the women said. He said, forever you will walk on gold. That's what she told me. Are you listening to me? As you see me like this, brothers and sisters, I am a product of many encounters and many anointings. Because I realize everything you have not seen in your life, you have not known how to receive it. Whatever it is that you have not seen in your life, you have not yet known how to receive it. Because it's available. Are you listening to me? Before Charles and Francis Hunter died, when I heard that they died, I cried. You know why I cried? Because I was planning that I was going to go to the U.S. And my plan was that I was going to book two weeks with them. Guess what I wanted to go and do? Not to go and preach to them the way many of you want to do. I wanted to go and scrub their toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. I wanted to beg them to allow me to scrub the toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me? It's a law. Whoever has what you do not have has the ability to impart it upon you. Whether it's your roommate, whether it's your brother. Listen, there are many barren women who will remain barren because they do not know how to open the doors of destiny. If you are a barren woman, Go and find a woman that has given birth and say, Madam, can I please wash your plate? And without controversy, the lesser. They may not pray for you. It's a law that happens automatically. Are you listening to me? See, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible tells us something. Because of time, I may not read it. Just write it. Look up, please. I studied my Bible and I saw that this principle was consistent. Do you remember the Bible talks about Solomon? Pastor, please sit down. Hallelujah. The Bible says Solomon was so blessed. He was so wealthy. Is that correct? When his news got round and the queen of Sheba heard about him, the Bible says the queen of Sheba gathered seeds. What did she do? How will you run to a man who is already prosperous and you are carrying seeds? Without controversy, the lesser can bring you into his realm. Sheeply. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says she came and met Solomon. And when she spoke with Solomon, the first thing she did, there's no time. The first thing she did was to acknowledge the fact that Solomon was greater than her. Listen, it is not weakness to realize that somebody is better than you. In this realm, there are people you are better than and there are people who are better than you. The ability to acknowledge them will open up their anointing for you. Are you listening to me? She acknowledged that truly there was no man like Solomon. And guess the next thing she did? She packaged her gifts and she gave Solomon question. How do you bless a man who is already blessed? Are you listening to me? Because he has an anointing that can bring you to his realm. 
that woman heard of the fame of Solomon and said, ah, ah, no, no, I need to find out what is going on. And the Bible says she sold and Solomon gave her everything she needed. That's what the Bible says. Are you listening to me? If your brother or your sister is not married, instead of casting out devils and getting angry, go and find a married couple and look at them. They just got married and say, please, um, I bought a small gift to just bless you. And without controversy, you are fulfilling a law in the spirit. Suddenly, you see yourself walking in the anointing. I used to see Benny Hinn. I loved him so much. I See, honor doesn't just mean you package a seed. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your tithes. Many of you have been giving your tithes. That's why the heavens are not open. There is a way you carry it. I'm not talking of being sanctimonious. That you realize that I'm sowing to someone who is richer than me. I'm sowing to someone who is more blessed than me. And she will take me. That's why the Bible says, my God, Paul speaking, shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory. Every time a woman's barrenness is about to finish, God will send a man who is higher than her and say, give him food. What is God doing? The widow of Zarephath. See, the Shunammite woman understood this. The moment she perceived he was a prophet of God, he said, quickly, let us build a place. And without controversy, whatever level you want to get to, there is a career of that anointing working in this earth. The reason is we have not honored them because some of them are your roommates in class. You go to class together but you do not know the difference. Hallelujah. You have been castigating everybody who is married. Instead of sowing... See, let me tell you the truth. I, everybody I see, every nice car that I see, because I want to buy a car, I just say, Lord, thank you for this car. If my friend buys a car today, I will be the first person to provide fuel for that car. I'm not a fool. I know this principle. Are you listening to me? You see why we are rich? Because we provide free bus transport for you. I don't know the kinds of anointings that are here. And I know that there are some anointings we do not have. So we sow into your anointing by providing bus. Many of you are laughing and wondering why this ministry is increasing. These are the laws. Are you listening to me? Every time I'm around a man of God, when I went to Dr. Akwami's church to minister, it was an honor because he's a father in the land. When I entered, people were there looking at me, oh, this is the Apostle Joshua. When I went in front of Dr. Akwami, I got down on both of my knees. I don't know him. He's not my spiritual father for some of you who have been misled and misguided with devilish doctrines. And I greeted him. And then I got up. Because without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me? Many of you sit down and watch men of God on TV. And you say, Kai, this man's realm herself is so bad. You have not gotten to where he's getting to. You have three members and you are criticizing him. There are people who criticize me today and criticize us and never walk in the anointing. I tell you, you can listen to all my tapes. The heaven will remain short. That honor is a law. Are you listening to me? Look at the myriads of Nigerians in Abuja and Lagos queuing for jobs. Their yard mate goes to a a lucrative office every day. Why not wake up early in the morning and polish his shoe and keep it for him? You may not understand what you are doing, but you are tapping into a law. I tell you, it will not take two weeks they will call you. Are you listening to me? Respect this principle I'm teaching you. For your information, let me give you a little secret about the prosperity of this ministry. I'm sowing into the life of living faith. I'm sowing into the life of Kenneth Copeland. I'm sowing into the life of Benny Hinn. I'm sowing into the life of Reinhard Bonke. I'm sowing into the life of Kobus van Rensburg. I believe them. When I got up, I went to South Africa. I was fasting. I was praying. I didn't go to show that I'm going abroad. I had serious business there. He was a career of an anointing. Others were discussing and criticizing. I said, Lord, I know there is grace. And I went there 
Smith Wigglesworth laid his hands on Lester Sumro. Are you listening to me? And Kobus was with Lester Sumro for one week and he laid his hands on me. When I went there, Kobus looked at me. He said, I want to connect you to the lineage of the generals. And he laid his hands on me three times. Sorry for all the people who carry every kind of rubbish news. It's not by age. If you understand the principle, you will rise. Are you listening to me? Listen to me. Hear me. My mother and my father laid their hands and blessed me for ministry. And this is why I can never fail. You don't know the hands and the anointings that are responsible for what you are seeing. Are you listening to me? I respect the careers of this anointing. I saw into the lives of blessed people. Mike Mudok, one of my greatest financial mentors. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's a seed seed man. But he carries something I'm looking for. When he came to Koza, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. I was streaming in my room and praying in tongues for six hours, for three, three hours every day, beginning to the end of that program. I prayed for the internet what I would have paid for my hotel bills. Some of you just get up and say, how are these people getting the anointing? And all kinds of stories. Hallelujah. Rather than celebrate, you, when you don't celebrate an anointing, forget about walking in it. I will never allow a man who is greater than me do what I can do for him. I go to a shop to buy something and I see an elderly woman I, I will over my dead body for that woman to pay that money if I can pay. He mustn't be a pastor. Hallelujah. You want to raise children. You see a woman that raised eight children. All of them are disciplined. There is an anointing. That woman can, you can tap into it. Hallelujah. I see ministries that represent the things I want. Even in the realms of prosperity. I couldn't understand the prosperity on Oedeko's life. I studied this man and read his books. I couldn't find the key. I said, Lord, what kind of thing is this guy? I mean, what is it? I need to see something there. And the Lord told me, one day you are going to sow into his life. The day the Lord told me I went, I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. And I sowed into that anointing. I came out to enter the car and the Lord told me, come out. And I came out. He said, kneel down on that ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands and the Lord said from today everywhere you go the land will open for you. And people keep criticizing. We go to CGC it's packed full with people. We come here packed full blue roof. See, when you see a man prospering find out what law is being operated. It's God that oversees his laws. I can't go to a restaurant with somebody that carries something. See, before all my brothers entered into a relationship, when they entered into a relationship, I was concerned. Ask them. Valentine's Day, I was so into it. Many of you are there grumbling and shouting and making noise. My sister is not married. What of me? Don't these guys like me? And you see your roommate, who may not be as good looking as you look like, every time she's cooking, where are you carrying this food? I'm cooking. I want to sow into an anointing. You are laughing at her. Then you see one clean brother who come out with his prosperity and say she's the one you marry. And you, you see, and God, you are not fear. Let me tell you, life will never change until you change it. For those of you who are waiting for things to change, are you listening to me? I'm showing you a law without controversy. The lesser is blessed of the greater. Hallelujah. I spoke to the protocol because we are trusting God for our boss. I told them, they told me that RCF, um, I mean, they were charging us a stipend for the boss. I said, very good. Because I was looking for a way to sow into their life. I'm looking for a boss. We are looking for a boss as a ministry. What do we do? We find a ministry that has what we are looking for and sow into it. Many people sit in Zaria here. They are broke. They are poor. Their ministries are broke. But people are running from Abuja, running from everywhere. They come and catch the fire and sow into the anointing. I'm not talking of seed. It's the law of honor. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. 
if you believe this, go and tell your brothers and sisters who are looking for jobs and looking for this and looking for marriage and looking for all of these things. Nothing will change. The Bible says when God saw their faith, faith can be seen. It's hope that cannot be seen. Many people have been doing hope. What they call faith. Sometimes I sit down and I'm watching television and I watch Benny Hinn. I watch Kobus. I watch all of these people and I'm kneeling down. We took the leaders, hear me, and all the heads of department because Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, they have a level of prosperity and excellence that is touching. You will be a wicked person to deny. Hallelujah. Other people were discussing, who are these people Said, Know this, know that. I told the leaders, Manasseh suggested it, and I said, quickly, the heads of department and the ministers, we went and we lodged in an expensive hotel in Abuja. It wasn't because we wanted to waste money. The lesser is blessed of the greater. When we went there, listen to me, the head of department went to go and meet the head of department there and walked there. The head of protocol went to go and meet them. Why will you be surprised that we are excellent? And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. I'm showing you a key. I promise you, it will open any door. Every time I am in lack, I find those who are prosperous. Quick! Quick with the remaining money. I don't waste my time sitting. I don't waste my time. No, no! Listen, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Hi, Lord. In John 21, the Bible says, Peter said, I want to show you something. Your skill can fail you. Are you listening to me? It was a time of recession. I was saying, Lord, give me a word for this recession. I've had many preachers and God showed me something. Do you know Peter was a fisherman? Realize that there was a time Jesus told him, go and fish and take the mouth from the coin. That means your potentials and your gift is supposed to bring prosperity. However, there are times it can fail. What law do you engage in when it fails? Let me show you. The Bible says Peter went to fish and found out that there was no fish. Suddenly there was no fish. A fisherman who used to fish all the time, there was no fish. And the Bible says, when you went, Jesus saw them. Listen to what Jesus tells them in John 21. He said, children. How many people is Jesus older than among the disciples? He said, children. It was a test of honor. Children, have you caught any fish? They said, no. He said, cast your net. That's you have passed the test. They would have said, children. Peter said, I'm married. They killed all your age mates from two years and below. I'm not older than you with two years old. How can a man call them children? My mother started calling me her father. I promise you, her poultry and her business just expanded. Hey, could it be that you have been missing something? Could it be that your miracle has been passing you? And you have been praying and hitting keys in the spirit without knowing which door is opening. When my mother came here, that's why quickly, before we said anything, I did what? I called her. I said, speak to this work without controversy. When it was time for her to go back, I packaged a dangerous seed and I went and met her. I may be your son, but this is not the issue of son now. I tapped into that grace quickly. Many of you see careers of anointings that you want. And you just keep looking at them all the time. Mukhtar, his laundry services is doing very well. He's a leader. He finished serving from Engineering Students Fellowship. And he's very good. Let me tell you a little history about this guy. Are you listening to me? For one year, Mukhtar came and was, before he started his business, he was dry cleaning my suit for one year. One solid year as a seed. He knew what he was doing. When you see the worship team and all these people doing what they are doing, they are tapping into crisis. There are many of you, you are, your job is to grumble and complain. There are many people that I honor and sow into their lives is not because they are nice people. I look at the weakness of others and get the gold in them. I'm interested in the anointing. When, let me tell you, when I'm watching a man that carries something, I can slap you if you come to, dis, to, to, to disturb me. 
I don't, I'm not the kind of person that is in church. Before you do anything, oh, I'm seen. And you are not getting anything. I give my rapt attention. My spirit is open. I'm saying, Lord, the guy, the guy may be joking for 30 minutes. I'm tired of this joke. Show me this key. And you sit down there. There are times I play messages of Benny Hinn. I'm not listening to the message. I just want to saturate under the anointing. And I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. For about one month, that was the song that, that was, it was his worship songs that I slept with all through the night. They will play all through the night. I'm just trying to show you that this is not a mistake. Do you know that if you honor people, finally yesterday we have started our, our meeting with you tomorrow this night. Many of you see the ministers. You just come because they are your colleagues. You just tap them. Ah, edgy, how far? I'm not saying you just lie down and lick people's legs. But I tell you the truth. You can sit down and tap into anointings. I never go and see a man that is higher than me empty-handed. No matter what happens, even if it is ten naira, I must put it in my pocket. And at the end of it, I will bless him. Are you listening to me? I want to show you that there are laws and there are principles that are working. I repented from castigating people and criticizing people. Any grace that I see, I humble myself. I say, Lord, you have empowered these people. Suddenly, sometimes, I listen to the tapes once. Do you know, aside from last week's tape, there is no koinonia message I don't listen to. I can easily say it's my ministry. I download it. I don't ask the media to bring it. I want it to cost me something. I download it. And every time I'm prophesying, or the man of God is prophesying rather, I get down on my knees. God is my witness. I say, Lord, I believe your servant is about to speak a word. I believe the anointing he's carrying. I promise myself that for a long time, nobody will sow into this ministry more than me. It's not because it's my ministry. I believe in the anointing that is carried. Many of you come and you just sit down and look at people. You see the ushers. You see everybody. God is opening doors for them. You are just smiling and looking and complaining and ranting and shouting and doing all kinds of things. I tell you, friends, if you obey this law, there is nothing that will not work for you. Your father was driven out of the job and his brother is still working. That's the time for him to go and greet his brother. Go and greet his brother and say, ah, well done, sir. And when they get to filling station, the remaining 4,000 that is left, carry 2,000 inside and say, please get well. Insist that they use your money and sow into the anointing that is working. Do you believe this? Or many of you are still saying, is that all? Do you believe this? I tell you the truth. See, let me tell you. If I were some of you seated here, I promise you, I will never allow any anointing pass me by unnoticed. If I wake up in the morning blind, by evening my eyes would have opened. I will find everybody who is seen and clean their shoe. I will just say, I'm sitting with a rag and water, I'm blind. Everybody whose eyes is open, please come and pass. Let me wash your leg. When God wanted men, he sowed his seed into the earth. And Jesus gave birth to a harvest that is still happening till now. We are going to pray. I know we have taken time, but I'm showing you a mystery that will open every door for you. Find careers of your anointing. Whether it's, even if it's only once you meet them in your life. They may not be men of God. Some of them may not even be born again. Hallelujah. You sow into the anointings. Every seed that comes into my life, I divide it. And I begin to sow. The tithe of this ministry every week each and every week we are sowing it many of you have been giving but you have only been doing charity you have not been rising because you look and say ah god tells you package this seed go and sow it into joshua selman's life he said god for god forbid 
I'm seeing suits like me, I'll go and sew. And you see somebody stand with a plate outside and he's begging you and you go and throw 20 naira. You'll be rewarded because you did charity. But that wealthy place, you will not enter it. No way. It's not done that way. Are you listening to me? During miracle service, you are standing. Some of you are frowning and just looking. These people say, why are they always joking? Call my case. Instead of you to come and be praying and say, Lord, part of my prayer request, there is grace. There is grace to receive. You can honor a man even without him knowing and you receive that anointing. Go and see what koinonia messages are doing in Futmina. Go and see the kind, the rip, the miracles and the revival that is happening in Futmina. I, I, I wasn't even aware until someone started giving me stories. I tell you, people catching fire. But there are some of you who are sitting down here. You hear prophecies that will come and you just laugh. Where I wonder where you think your miracle is coming from. When Paul was going to Damascus and he fell, the Bible says God commanded Ananias. In other words, he recognized he was a carrier of that glory. And Ananias said, Brother Paul, God sent me that I should lay my hands on you, that your eyes be opened and that you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And Paul said, Yes. I've seen it in a vision. And he laid hands on him. Many of you come in every week. You see prosperity. You see excellence. You feel God is calling you into ministry. Every time you see every man of God, you come and talk and look. And say, ah, Jake, I saw you that day at the faculty. And suddenly the door is closed. You will secretly get his tape and listen to him, And you find out that the door is not opening. You can't find that key. Are you learning something tonight? Graduates, forget about that nonsense of trying to look for your uncle or auntie. If I were you, and we are going to talk tomorrow by 12, right here. As soon as you finish, go and find somebody that is working. Polish his shoe. While you are polishing, Kaboka Batakalia, Reto Soprende Kepariataba. God is calling you into ministry. You prepare, or God told you you marry a minister. Go and find a bad pastor. William's wife is coming here every week. Every week you are seeing her. After you finish, you say, Ah, give me five. You just shake her. And the door closes, and you shake empty hands. And somebody can come and say, Lord, if I may but touch the hell of his garment. That's how many of you keep sitting here. People come from other states. Less than 30 minutes, they have caught fire and caught an anointing. Are you getting blessed? I'm not saying you should give me money. I'm blessed. You know that. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Every time you see people serving you and sowing into you and you are laughing, Say, Kai, that means I'm a big man. You are not wise. You should turn quickly and start finding a way. There is he that scattered and increases. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. I can't be a failure in life. No way. Not when there is one career of an anointing. Hallelujah. When Pastor Biodu was going to bring Dr. Myers Munro, do you know what they did? What I mean, um, um, what's his name? The, Mike Mudok. Do you know what they did? One month before he came, they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs. See, after me, honor. As soon as he was entering his hotel room, a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote. He announced it on air. That in all his life and ministry he has gone around the world. No ministry has honored him like this. The honorarium that they were supposed to give him, they doubled it times three and sold it into his life. There are people who have been in Abuja since 1991. 1991, they don't have their building. When he came into Abuja, he went and met the pastor with the largest church and greeted him. Many of you are there on campus. God called me into ministry. 
you are foolishly doing things there are people who have run this race before you you can't come and greet them you see them you just push them i taught somebody and they fell down it will tire you see now it's not it's not like before that they tell somebody no no you see stay back and let, go 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 and do ministry hallelujah while on campus we were all already in ministry i tell you we we're men of god but i served in fcs till i finished i was a prayer secretary engineering students fellowship we we're already in ministry doing great things jakes was the president of naka Ejimi was cutie cutie uh, uh, he was in cutie hallelujah manasseh was in faculty of arts he was prayer secretary bishop became the prayer secretary after me right and then he became the president of engineering students fellowship are you listening to me we were ministry but we knew the power of service and tapping into anointings that was higher than us from there i became the national prayer secretary of conference of nigerian christian engineering students then we all were serving jakes became the president of some of the people who we got born again later became our leaders in fcs and we still told them yes sir we'll go to their father's church and preach and come and say yes sir to them but we're still saying yes sir because it was about office not person are you listening to me so why will you be surprised today that he and i will never lack people who are serving are you listening to me it's a law and it's a principle after tonight's meeting we're going to pray two prayer points the first prayer point is you are going to ask god and say lord i have allowed the careers of my anointing to pass me by without recognizing them from today open my eyes to practice the law of honor i need to begin to work in uncommon results there are careers rise up on your feet somebody's life is changing i tell you somebody's life is changing this is one of the most powerful message you would have had in 2012 and without controversy the lesser i've given you a key tonight i tell you it will unlock any door i don't care what that door is it will unlock every door Bakapatakata. doors of jobs doors of ministry doors of business doors of power say lord i repent from dishonoring the careers it may be your mother it may be your father it may be somebody by the roadside it may be an elderly woman somewhere an elderly man somewhere it may be your head of department it may be people around look beyond the man see an anointing that can take you to a new level and without controversy the lesser is empowered enriched blessed lifted glorified honored by the greater let this key open a door for you doors of greatness doors of new anointings doors of increase doors of business doors of marriage doors of family doors of jobs hallelujah hallelujah now you are going to pray and you are going to prophesy and say in the name of jesus i honor every career of the anointing that i need in my life you may not meet some of them for the rest of your life but you can honor them and it can be recorded in the spirit it may be your mother it may be a woman that gave birth to a good or a woman that has a good husband you are looking for a good husband you want a new car you want a new job 
you want promotion you don't get it by dishonor some vessels are unto honor some vessels are unto dishonor if you can recognize this you are a wise man you are a wise woman we are rounding up come on pray Lord I serve with my seed I serve with my time I serve with good report in the name of Jesus but take a posture I recognize anointings I respect anointings hallelujah hallelujah listen to me when you look at a man you may not know when you see a man who is anointed find out the encounters that brought that man to that level are you listening to me find out what level of grace someone may come up the podium or he may preach on tv he may not have the utterance you are looking for find out what brought him on tv that you have not yet gone somebody may come up here and may be preaching in house and you are having to they're having to interpret and you laugh as hey, this guy cannot preach you are there seated at the back the person is there in front there must be something he carried i tell you if you don't recognize this you can, see let me tell you oh no it's not something you say uh, i did it in my heart lie lie is a law somebody will do it for you too so you have to honor any man not just a pastor whoever carries what you don't carry respect the sacrifice that brought it and you will see that you are stepping into it listen let me give you a secret for those of you who are preachers every time you go to preach in a place and you see someone who is higher than you in the anointing, recognize the grace of God upon that man, the meeting has opened unto you. If you come with arrogance, if I come today and Manasseh is occupying a higher spiritual position than me and I refuse to recognize him, I promise you, you will struggle in that meeting. The heavens will close. I don't care what kind of anointing you carry. These are laws people don't know. No matter who you are, you won't change it. Many of you after now may need to send texts to certain people you have insulted. Careers of your anointing. When they speak, they spit on your face because of how they talk. That's none of your business. You are looking for something. God knows why he didn't put it inside you and put it inside them. Hallelujah. I have a big burden because there are certain kinds of anointings in this house. I have not seen in the lives of many people yet. And I know that is because many of you either do not honor it and do not respect it. I'm not talking of lying and rolling on the floor. My greatest, my greatest desire is not to be a superstar Joshua Selman standing. I tell you, my greatest desire is that every one of you, there are many anointings that are for the taking. Many of you don't know how to receive. And let me tell you something. The careers of your anointing are not always within your reach every day the price is more every day the price is more a day will come it will cost you more than it's costing you right now i tell you the truth there are many people for instance with all humility i when i used to have a lot of time you remember those times we we'll sit down sometimes some of the ministers were around but right now we don't have that luxury every day it keeps moving further if you don't see it a time will come elijah will move you are looking you will not see the chariot someone will come from behind and see the chariot and carry a mantle hallelujah very soon many generals of god are leaving zaria many of you are the ones who will carry the next fire of revival in your arrogance and pompousness you will never look and say there are anointings what did these people carry that made them shake the campus what did these people carry in the midst of persecution in the midst of pain and say lord would you cause that there be a rain on my life 
What keys open the door of prosperity? What keys open the door of influence? Many of you don't know what is bringing people inside and outside. You are busy castigating and say, eh, crowd does not matter. Instead of you to say, Lord, there is a key. Once upon a time, these people were not there. What brought them? The train is moving. And for those who can see, you can catch something and ride on it. Kaposa Tabala. Without controversy, the lesser. I tell you a secret of commanding results. You will command results. God put results on earth to be reproduced, not to be stood with one man. He who has an ear tonight, let him hear. Our lives on earth are governed by times and seasons. Hallelujah. The Bible says he made some lights to regulate times and seasons. Hallelujah. And we function in this earth realm with the understanding of times and seasons. Although God exists in the realm of eternity. But when he relates with man, he relates with man in time. That's why the Bible says in the 50th year, in the second month of this, God did this. When the prophet was going to prophesy to the woman, although he was speaking from the realm of eternity, because he was speaking to one who was in this time, he said, according to the time of life. Hallelujah. And so, the Bible says the children of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. Hallelujah. We need to have discernment to understand what God is doing in every season. Because one definition of frustration is to try to flow in an area where the spirit is not flowing. The eagle has this as an understanding. It will stand from the mountain top and observe the current of the wind. The eagle does not fly. It soars. Other birds fly because they try to guess the direction of the wind. But the eagle stands for a while. It's not in a hurry to start jumping. It observes the current and then it soars. And then it can rise above other ordinary birds. Hallelujah. And we took our time by the Spirit of God to hear the things that the Lord would have us hear even by His grace. And the Lord has declared that this is a year of great grace. Now, now I know that several ministries receive different words. Now, God has an agenda for the entire earth. Are you listening to me? And then He has an agenda for continents. Are you following me now? And then He has an agenda for territories. So there is the agenda of God for the world, for mankind. There is the agenda of God for the continent of Africa. Africa has a role to play. Are you following me now? There is an agenda for Nigeria in this season. Are you following me now? And then every ministry that names the name of Christ has an agenda. And so it's the job and the responsibility of the leaders to find out. It's not just a word and say, we're not saying this is what God is doing all over the earth necessarily. We're saying that this is how He would love us to position ourselves to fit into the big picture of prophecy that He will be bringing. And so you find out that different words can come from different ministries. Although I am aware that there are people who just sit down and browse the internet for the number 12 and then they say this is a year of government or something. You see, um, while it is good that we bring out prophetic things, it's important that we don't guess what we feel God is saying. It's important we stay real time in His presence and hear what He said. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. He said, He will not do anything but reveal His secrets to His servants and prophets. The secret things of the Lord are with them that fear Him and He will show them His covenants. Hallelujah. He said, if you seek me early, you will find me. And so God has given us this word. And when people receive words like this, the first thing we do is to jump and to celebrate. And, and now that's wonderful. But if you have been here for a while, you understand that we are not just people who jump at promises. We are always positioned to find out how we will align ourselves with prophecy. Let me tell you something about prophecy before you sit down. You see, the Bible prophesied that someone was going to betray Jesus. It didn't mention the name of any man. The Bible says that he will be given birth to by a virgin. He didn't call Mary. Are you listening to me? He said he will ride upon a donkey. 
he didn't call the name of any man you see prophecy is such that when it comes to this earth realm it begins to scan for human vessels who can align with the condition to make that prophecy come to pass are you following me now and so prophecy is not automatic that it means that it's going no if god declares a word and says i intend to bless you that word begins to find those who fit the condition for its manifestation it goes around the entire earth looking for those who posture themselves are you listening to me and so it is possible mary would have violated that's why permission was asked from her before she got pregnant the angel came to seek permission if she refused the world will look for another virgin jesus would still have been born because no man played his fatherly role and so it really wouldn't have mattered so much who played the motherly role because he still wouldn't come with the blood of mankind hallelujah are you following me now and so when god gives prophecy it's not just it's not just to receive and jump no no that's the reason why you can have a vision for instance and see that god is healing one person and then you find out that 20 people will come they have positioned themselves to enter the reality of that prophecy hallelujah he, he was he was brought to heal the nation of israel and then a gentle woman came and positioned herself and said even the dogs eat from the crumbs and she forced herself into that prophecy are you following me now and so when we when prophecies are released that's not the time to just rejoice it's the time to align hallelujah it's the time to align and tonight will not be taking so much time i'll just share to prepare our hearts and then we pray hallelujah ah, ah, hello hello madonna ah, 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 ah. Elohim Madonna Elohim Elohim Madonna Elohim Elohim Madonna Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Haggai. Shibabo Saparianda Kaboshta. Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. Verse 6. Haggai chapter 2 verse 6. For thus saith the Lord of hosts. That name there is El Elyon. Listen. Hold on. Stop. I need to explain to you. Every time God is speaking. Don't just observe what he's saying. Observe what dimension of him is speaking. There are times that he speaks as El Shaddai. There are times he speaks as El Elyon. There are times he speaks as Yahweh. The dimension he's speaking tells you the gravity of what he's trying to communicate. And he said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. The word there is El Elyon. Hallelujah. El Elyon. Every time he uses the name El Elyon, he's about to speak over something that has to do with men who have been contending in the earth. The Lord of hosts, El Elyon. Now El Elyon is speaking. He said, Yes. Yet once it is a while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house. There is a particular house. Not every house. I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Hmm. Verse 8. The silver is mine. 
and the gold is mine said the lord of hosts verse 9 let's read together the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former and in this place i will give peace now the word peace there is not just quietness and rest the word peace there is shalom hallelujah it means prosperity it means deliverance it means blessings are you following me now there's something the jewish people had called the covenant of peace it wasn't just the covenant it was a covenant of health covenant of prosperity covenant of well-being and so god is saying because my glory will fill this place i will cause that shalom prosperity health blessings and everything that i represent the word glory is from the hebrew word kabod the greek is doxa it means the weightiness the full presence the true essence and the nature of a person or a thing and god is saying every time my true person my glory the weight of all that i am and all that i represent fills a place and a people they will experience shalom the peace of god that passes all understanding the quietness and rest hallelujah and so god is set to glorify you this year god is set to bring an ornament of glory upon your life that will shock you i love speaking at the first meetings of every year because at the end of the year you will listen and then you will see the sequence of the manifestations of the word of the lord hallelujah i love it so much when things are declared because before they happen that's why god will oftentimes speak so that men will try to stop him and then he will ride in his majesty and do it all the same and you say i am proving to you that i am lord he's the only one who is not afraid you know we're always if you are building you say don't tell anybody until the house is complete god will say this is what i want to do do your worst so long as you align i can do it every factor notwithstanding hallelujah Amen. and so it's god's desire that we will walk in not just glory great glory great glory hallelujah that we will walk in levels of god's life the fullness of the kingdom life with power and authority and we will legislate on behalf of heaven i'm telling you i'm excited about 2012 not because it's the beginning of the year you know every year you were excited about last year you know for many of you the last year thank you you went don't ever come back again but this is quite a year hallelujah it's so significant that even the mayans in ancient time had something to say about this year 2012 the eyes of many soothsayers voodoo yoga all over the world their eyes has been on 2012 there's something significant about this year and it will unfold as we see for many people they are afraid because of the year the way the year is starting and all of that and um i bring you a word of encouragement fear not the lord is not wondering what to do from heaven he's not holding an emergency meeting to say are you seeing what is going on in this country called nigeria what for god's sake do we do he is king of kings there is nothing called future in his presence what we call our future is his past and so when he speaks he speaks from that realm of dominion when he tells you all things are all right trust him we are yet to see our future but he has gone there and come back he exists in that span he's not called alpha and omega he's called alpha omega he's at the beginning and at the end at the same time and it is from that perspective that he tells you everything is all right he says stay on to the righteous it shall be well say unto the righteous hallelujah be seated in god's presence thank you good to see everyone we're really looking beautiful handsome wonderful glorious colorful bright i hope that this is how you'll be smiling when we are holding our last service for this year you know it's amazing how people start new year with all kinds of vigor and joy and when we are dancing for the final service we just say god thank you ah! did i survive say lord let it not come back again 
But this is a year that you will miss it so much when you are going into 2013. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll be speaking briefly on dimensions of grace. Second Peter chapter 2. Chapter 1, really. Second Peter chapter 1. Dimensions of grace. Thank you, Lord. Dimensions of grace. We'll be exploring the revelation of God's grace, trying to understand the concept of grace. Hallelujah. Since God has declared that this is a year of great grace and glory, it's important for us to understand what grace is and the requirements for grace. And I'll be speaking really briefly. Hallelujah. Verse 2, let's read together. Second Peter 1, are you there? Say Amen. I hope you bought a new Bible this year. Listen, you, you must make some resolutions under the anointing of the Spirit this year. No more burnt Bibles that half of it was burned with fire and you take a um, Bible that you received when you were doing evangelism. You know, in secondary school, FCS brought it for you. You put it in your pocket. You, you, this is a year to grow. Say myself, grow up. Alright, let's continue. Verse 2, let's read together. One, two, read. Stop. Grace and peace be what? Be multiplied. Hallelujah. This is an epistle that Peter is writing to the church. He said, grace be multiplied. Grace be multiplied. Oftentimes, Paul will start his epistles by saying, grace. Grace. Have you read that in your Bible? Grace be unto you and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, grace. And here Peter is saying, grace be multiplied. So there's a mystery that the ancient knew and they understood about the grace of God. Grace be multiplied unto you. Hallelujah. And so we are, we've established from the word of God that God's grace can be multiplied. Grace can be multiplied. But what is this grace, really? When we talk about grace... When people meet you and say, Kai, you are making it in this life where you say it's God's grace. So, and many believers don't even know what we are talking about. What is grace? Hallelujah. Tonight I choose to be very simple and straight and direct to the point we are just starting. We have other meetings where we have the opportunity to trash things out. But one of my goals this year is to make the gospel as simple, plain, basic and as applicable as it can be. Are you following me now? The end of every revelation is application. That you can receive and apply it. Hallelujah. What is grace? And I'm talking about dimensions of grace. And so from the definition, I'm going to open us up to um, a twofold working of grace that we'll be considering. Hallelujah. Generally speaking, grace talks about God's unmerited access. Talks about... Um, unmerited access an access that is given unto you that you do not merit that you did not work for are you listening to me very very important revelation chapter 3 verse 8 says i set before you an open door you didn't open it by yourself i set before you an open door he said no man can shut it hallelujah and so the grace of god talks about his unmerited access his ability that comes in to cover for your inadequacies. Hallelujah. Where God steps in to do above and beyond what your efforts can do. The grace of God. Hallelujah. That's the general definition that um, many believers and many Christian circles know about grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another word for grace based on that definition or another dimension of grace is called favor. Hallelujah. That's what I just defined for you. So if you're writing, you can write favor. Grace is the manifestation of the favor of God in your life. That He shows you favor. He brings to you something that uh, blessings and riches and positions that you do not merit. Hallelujah. But the second dimension of grace that I'll also be teaching is God's divine enablement. Write it. God's divine enablement. 
God's divine enablement that causes you to do things and accomplish things far beyond your effort and your capacity. God's divine enablement. You can call that the enablement of God. And these are the two dimensions of grace we are going to be considering tonight. Hallelujah. Every time God talks about grace, for many believers, our concept of grace is just, um, okay, God opening doors for me, you know, I will occupy houses I didn't build, collect people's cars I didn't buy. You know, and, 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 now, and now there's a dimension of that grace. It's called the favor of God. He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the Kairos time, the set time is come. Hallelujah. The Bible says how that when Egypt, Israel found favor in the eyes of Pharaoh and the Egyptians and they spoiled the Egyptians. They left Egypt with plenty. They left with their bounty. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand how that Daniel, Joseph, Queen Esther, different people found favor. And so there is, there is a place of God's favor. Are you following me now? And so when God is saying it's a season of great grace, one of the things God is saying is that you will step into dimensions of His favor. Are you following me now? That you will experience the favor of God in an unlimited dimension even in this season. That God will bring things into your life that is beyond your prayer life. Beyond your prayer and fasting. Are you listening to me? God will bring you into certain levels of blessings and give you as an inheritance. The Bible says, for by grace you are saved. Why? Because you didn't do anything. You just responded to the grace and the mercy of God. Are you following me now? You didn't have to go and crucify yourself. So it's by the grace of God, that dimension of His favor, that lavishly bestows things upon you that you did not work for. Hallelujah. But then there is a dimension of His grace that I'd like us to examine briefly. It's called the enablement of the Spirit. When God tells us it's a season of great grace, that's because there will be great responsibilities. Are you following me now? That means that there will be responsibilities beyond your natural human capacity. Are you listening to me? Remember when Paul prayed and he had all kinds of infirmities and challenges. What did God say? My grace is sufficient. That was not favor. My enablement. So when Paul speaks to the church here and says grace be multiplied. Because they were busy in the vineyard doing the works of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Great grace. The enablement of the Spirit. There are several things that we have to do and accomplish this year by the grace of God. And humanly speaking, we are unable to do this. Let me tell you something. When God gives you an assignment, it will always be bigger than you and your capacity. If God ever gives you anything that is equal to you that you can do, be sure that was not God. Go back and pray. Hallelujah. Moses, tell the people to move forward. How could God say such a thing? Do you know the audacity it takes to stand before two million people and say, ladies and gentlemen, here you go, that's your way. Those guys were not laughing. Pharaoh was behind. Moses was under pressure. Are you listening to me? So it takes the enabling grace of the Spirit for you to be able to push through certain things because it will require you riding for for many of us this year will require you breaking status quo status quo in your family certain things that have been the norm and i tell you the truth it will require the enablement of the spirit to take many of us will be taking giant steps this year steps that you never had the audacity to take as individuals as ministers will be taking steps that are humanly speaking bigger than your capacity but when you realize that there is the great enablement of the Spirit, then you say, Lord, I can take this load. It humanly looks bigger than me. How many of you have studied the lives of the ants? When an ant wants to lift, I hear that it's able to lift something about 50 times its size. The ant has the revelation of great grace. And it comes without thinking twice and just lifts the food and, and, and when you look at the ant, you cannot understand where the strength is coming from. You blow the ant and it will 
it will shift away. You blow what he wants to carry and it will not shift. Yes, the hand will come and lift it. That's a spiritual mystery we must study. The ants, that's why I say go to the ant, you sluggard. There's a lot to learn. Hallelujah. Many of us will be carrying weights that humanly speaking would have suppressed you to death. But you will ride it through and people will say from whence cometh this energy? And you say it's the great grace of God. Enablement to accomplish supernatural things. Things that you would either to be afraid of. Many of you, great grace will come upon you and you will preach the gospel and win souls like you have never done in your life. Many of you will see yourself healing people and getting people filled with the Holy Spirit. You will be surprised. The grace of God at work in you. Hallelujah. It's on account of His grace that we will experience His glory. And so we must prepare and posture ourselves. Paul is speaking I mean, Peter is speaking to the church and he says, grace be multiplied. The abundance of it. Hallelujah. He's speaking this and prophesying to them because of the things he's about to tell them. Are you following me now? Every time God wants to give you great instructions, he supplies grace. When God wants to move you to a new level and a new dimension, the first thing is not the assignment. The first thing is the enablement. The only challenge is that it takes the faith of the Son of God for us to begin to move. Because you may not even feel anything. You will not feel more anointed. You will not feel more graced. But the enablement comes with the word that has been spoken. It has nothing to do with your feelings. And then you find yourself walking in realms and dimensions and doing things that are far beyond your capacity. Hallelujah. So how many of you believe that God is lavishly releasing grace upon us even in this season? The grace that manifests as his favor in our lives. We expect to see things beyond our efforts. But that's not room enough to fold our hands and smile. And say, oh thou God of grace. Fire on. Do whatever, do what only you can do. You know, believers pray that prayer as an expression of laziness sometimes. Say, God, do what only you can do. And then God says, what of the one we can do together? This is koinonia. He said, God, I don't want, I don't want to share your glory. Do a loan and take the glory. Let me just take the blessings. What's the difference between blessings and glory? Hallelujah. So many believers like running away from responsibilities. He said, Lord, he said, this work, I, I can't try to be God. I won't take your place. Do your thing, take your glory. Just carry me along. No, this, this is not a year to be carried along. This is the year to participate. That's why we say koinonia is intimacy and partnership. Hallelujah. That we have a mutual partnership with divinity. Hallelujah. Grace. Many of us will ride over things that used to be challenges last year as if they don't exist. It's called the grace of God. You will hear certain things that you would have had last year and cried and you smile over it and say God is still faithful. And people say, what in the world is going on? It's called grace. The grace of God. Now your family members call you and say, things are going from bad to worse in this country. And you smile and say, I still see that he is faithful. From what dimension are you speaking? The grace of God. Supernatural enablement. Your father wants to build. Build a house. The foundation has been there for years. And you tell him, daddy, this is the year of great grace. Who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel? This is the time when you will fall down flat. You tell him there is this is a year of grace where we will push through and accomplish things by the Spirit. Eh? Where will the money come from? The grace of God. There is an enablement. Are you following me? Many of us can pray for 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, you are pinching everything you can pinch around you. But there is grace for you. That you will stretch through and build. There are many people that hate times of prayer. They hate prayer meetings in this place. The moment you say, tonight you say, prayer, hey, why did I come? But there is grace. He said, quicken us and we will call upon your name. Hallelujah. Do you believe these things I'm sharing? Because that's what God is preparing us. For me, I have, I have prayed and entered into this prophecy. I told God, Lord, 
If people think they've seen anything about my life, brace up. You're about to see a shocker in 2012. You think you've seen anything about ENI and Koinonia? I bring the word with audacity. This year you will open your mouth and put your hands. Mark my words. You will see accomplishments by the Spirit. Things that no human being can take credit for. Every time you see it and men ask you, say grace. That's going to be your language this year. Grace. Grace. That every time you go to prayer, your prayer will be, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for grace. When they give you a task and an assignment, you say, Lord, I'm not crying. There is grace. There is an abundant supply of grace. God says, it's in this season. You will begin to partner with ministry just as you are. How will it happen? The grace. There is an enablement from heaven. It's not by your power. It's not by your might. Grace, grace. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 4 verse 33. Can someone read Acts chapter 4 verse 33? Let's see what happened to the early church. Acts chapter 4 verse 33. And with great power. And with, listen. He said, and with great power. Gave the apostles. Okay. Witness of the resurrection. Witness of the resurrection. Of the Lord Jesus. Of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them. And great grace was upon them. Great grace was upon them. So they began to accomplish supernatural things. Have you ever wondered why Paul single handedly would travel through Asia Minor conquering people? These people will step into cities and within days they will begin to shake the foundations of those cities. It's called grace. Grace. The grace of God. One man without publicity. Suddenly churches will begin to mobilize themselves and support him and finance him. It's called grace. Are you listening to me? When you understand the language of grace this year, you will, you will move in a way as though Satan does not exist. It's called grace. We were going to travel to my Duguri. Um, last, last week I was there. And um, there was change in plans in the flight. I should do so. We, we thought it was in the evening. Myself and Steve Strings. Hallelujah. And we left in the afternoon to go to Abuja and there take our flight. And we just got to find out that we missed the flight. And we needed to be there. And you know, you know my Duguri is far, right? Really, really far. From my Duguri to Lagos is a two hours drive. That's the farthest distance, border to border of this country. Hallelujah. And I told the driver, I said, Can you go to my Duguri? And he was just looking at me. Who in the world will want to go to Maiduguri on the road on a Friday? And I told him, if you are ready, let's go. And we carried stiff strings. We were leaving. We left Kano. Not up to an hour when the bomb blast started. Hallelujah. And when we got to Damaturu, we could not. We couldn't get in because of the curfew. And so... We got there by seven, and they said we had to sleep. <laughs> we had to sleep outside. I mean, sleep in the car. And I looked at Steve. I said, "Steve, there's grace for us. See you in the morning. How it will happen? I mean, I tried to sleep. I woke up. I found I was just 30 minutes. I said, "What? This is not funny. We're going to be here till six, twelve straight hours." But then here and there. You know, we went through the whole hustle and bustle and we saw the grace of God. A time came we were in Damaturu and we were about to enter a place that had been earmarked as a no-go area because we didn't know. Once you enter there, military men will begin to shoot you because they believe you are terrorists. And so we entered and while we were moving, the grace of God, and people started shouting, non-believers, we noticed they started shouting at us and calling and saying, no, come back, turn, turn. And then we turned, the driver turned the car. And when he came, two of them, non Christians, came out from their car and entered our car and led us through the path until we came out to a place of safety. We didn't pay them, we didn't do anything. Are you following me? It's called what? Grace. And when we got to the police, the, the military checkpoints, it was so strict. Sometimes they would just come and look at us. And the soldiers had a guy. And then they would just say, Pass. They couldn't explain. What do we call it? It's called grace. 
Hallelujah. It's called grace. The grace of God will set you apart. The grace of God will bless you and bring certain blessings to you. I think Manasseh is aware someone walked up to us and, and told us that he was going to shoulder fueling the generator for Koinonia, right? From now till the quarter of the year. And he gave a deposit and he said he's still bringing another one. What did we give him? Nothing. It's called what? Grace. Do you believe what I'm telling you? It's an enablement of the Spirit. It's called grace. You step into realms of abundance. So we must embrace the multifaceted dimension of grace. Are you following me? There is a dimension that will enable you to accomplish things. But then there is only so much you can do. And there is a dimension called the favor of God. The favor of God. Where strangers will feed your flocks. And your gates will be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. You will step into a place and see people beating themselves left, right and center to make way for you. And you'll be wondering, what is it? It's not about my qualification. My name doesn't even sound it. Where jobs will look for you without you applying. People will come and beckon on you and beg you. Do you believe what I'm saying? The grace of God. Where you'll be lying down, you are not praying, you are not fasting. But revelations will begin to be downloaded. And when you step out, people will think that you have been in a place. They think you locked yourself for 200 days. But you just open the Bible and see a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. It's called grace. Hallelujah. There are many of us that you will lie down. There will almost be no night you will not have a dream or see something or have direction from the Spirit. You will hear a voice beyond your prayer life. Even when you talk to somebody and say, Ah, look at you, your big head. Suddenly, you are still hearing revelation. Many of you, you will utilize your, the notepads on your phones this year like never before. Because you will become not just a talking spirit, but a writing spirit. God will be communicating things. What to do? Direction by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Supernatural accomplishment. Some of you will be sitting, your family members will be sitting down like this. And someone will just come and carry a check and say, The Lord led me to sow this for the building that has been waiting. And your father will say, Sorry, you, are you a number of but tell me you, this Nigeria is corrupt. And the person will say, Sorry, I'm just acting under instructions. Have a nice day. The grace of God. Are you following now? The grace of God. For many of you, the grace of God will fish you out. You will hear a report from your department. They say they are calling you. They said there was a time when something happened and uh, are you, you owe this and that and that and they'll say, come. We just found out that there was a problem. We apologize and after years. The Bible says a time came when Mordecai was good to the king but nothing happened. Then there was a day when the Chronicles was opened. He called it the Book of Remembrance. And the king began to search and say, ah, come on, Mordecai did this. He stopped people from killing me. Did they reward him? And then he called Haman. Isn't it interesting that when God wants to bless you, he uses your enemies? But Haman thought it was for himself. So his selfishness made him to give the best. He said, ah, I know what that kind of man will get. Stand upon a horse and everybody will ride. He said, this is what we will do to Haman. And you are the one who organized it. He makes a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This is not the year to worry about enemies. This is the year to concentrate on your partnership with the king and keep moving. Let me tell you friends, you will drip in unlimited grace. Unlimited grace. You will buy something from someone's shop and that day the person will see you and say, come, 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 I'll give you something free. The day you left my shop, people came in a way I made more sales that day. What is it about your life? You tell him there is a dimension of grace. Are you following me? There is a dimension of grace. You visit a family and they just tell you we are trusting God. The children have not been moving forward, no admission. And they just say, Lord, we release grace. Let there be an abundant supply of grace. Suddenly you call and hear that two of them are married, two have gotten admission, one is doing his master's work. Grace that brings acceleration. The Bible makes us to understand that Elijah told Ahaz, he said, saddle your ass for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Ahaz had gone far. 
while he went back and he sat down praying the bible says suddenly when he saw a hand like the fist of a man he knew that it was the manifestation of that grace and the bible says the hand of the lord came upon him he tied he girded his loins and with his bare foot can you imagine he ran and overtook the chariots of ours see let me tell you something you will accomplish more this year you will, I'm, I'm not just prophesying i'm speaking to you sincerely you will accomplish more this year unlimited dimensions of accomplishments by the spirit many of you who are trusting god to set up structures that can help your family and bring food in the table for you will receive ideas and the enabling grace of the spirit you will move with the strength of a nation one man the bible said that there was a man called samson that when the hand of the lord comes upon that man he will accomplish things i tell you the truth samson was like me otherwise delilah would not ask him for the source of his strength if i lift this speaker or that speaker with one hand you certainly know i did it by grace correct i don't look like the kind of person who would do that um i always say it. i know how god designed me that's why i don't fight i only speak the word i love the kingdom no fighting you speak the word ah! if we had to use efforts i prefer to be a levite i'll just sit in the temple two force and meditate mediating like like anna the prophetess hallelujah great grace be multiplied unto you that's what god wants to bring into our lives and then suddenly because of the manifestation of god's grace you begin to see beauty and glory in your life like you have never seen the manifestation of the spirit you will begin to see i'm telling you a time will come when people will beg you to touch anything that belongs to them just so that you can release this grace it will be scary because even you you will not be able to explain it let me use bishop oedeko's words it will be inexplainable but undeniable i love him so much inexplainable so when people ask you and say Wumi, how is this thing happening in your life like this you tell them honestly it's god's grace so many of you who don't have Michael Smith song, go and get it. You will need to listen to that song again and again. Supernatural accomplishments. You're just sitting and they just call you and say you have qualified for something in your department. I don't have the highest CGPA. The, the exam officer said, it's none of my business. I was given an instruction. Grace. You miss out on a test and they are giving everybody zero and the lecturer looks at you and says, you have been looking at you. Anyway, we are giving a makeup test. Grace. Do you believe what I'm saying? In your place of work, in your endeavors. For me, I'm already enjoying the unlimited dimensions of God's grace. And I told myself, I said, Lord, I will walk in this dimension of grace. I tell you the truth. The favor of God will speak in your life in a way. And many people can say, this thing is not fair. Ah. Hallelujah after me i'm well positioned to enjoy great grace i pray you understand the gravity of what you are saying say i'm well positioned to enjoy great grace for the glory of the lord is risen upon you the grace of the lord is risen upon you the grace of the Lord is risen upon you. We are eyes shine, the light is come. For glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. We are the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. In the vision that the Lord showed me, I saw right outside here. 
I saw three cars. One bus, one car that I thought it was just a bus we were going to buy. And God said, The grace. There is there's so much responsibility. There's grace. I saw I saw plenty cars in this place. I said, Lord, what is this? What 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 are all these cars? And God said, I will make abundant supply. See, let me tell you something. People will criticize you because you enter realms that they feel you are not you are not qualified to enter. It's for the service of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Many of you this year you will begin to sow seed and partner in millions. I know it doesn't make sense. Many of you will literally turn, I tell you the truth, God Himself. You will step back into your family and a situation that has eaten your family up. Satan having his way. You say, Satan, I come in with great grace. Get lost. Get out of this family. And suddenly, your dad who has been lying, paralyzed, almost dying, suddenly jacks up. Great grace. It is beyond your prayer life. Great grace. Great grace. He said, great grace was upon the apostles. Many of you, you will run like Elijah. This is the year when you will run. You will run at a speed that is beyond that of your contemporary. Grace. Grace. You will sit down and stretch and pray for hours in the spirit. Study the word for hours in the spirit. Accomplish things. A quickening of your mind by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Many of you, this is the year you will wait by by to carry over forever. Because grace, a mantle of grace will come on you. You will run with the spirit of Elijah. That even when they give a what they call short con, there will be enabling grace. Nothing will take you aback. You will stand with a stamina that is beyond your mental capacity. It's called grace. Many of you will see increase in your businesses and finances, ideas by the spirit. In the middle of the night, the Spirit of God will wake you. You will hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. No, don't go this way. No, go this way. Direction by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Many of us, this is the year you will experience a performance. Many of you have never seen the word of God working in your life. I know you say the word works. This is the year you will see a performance. Performance. He said, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have promised. He said, being confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work in me. He is able to perform it. This is the year of the performance. You will perform things. You will see the manifestation of the word of God. I speak it by the spirit according to the abundance of grace that is supplied unto me. You will run like Elijah in the name of Jesus. You will move with the spirit of Elijah. Accomplishments by the spirit beyond your age, beyond your level of exposure. Levels of grace like you have never seen. Grace that you 
No more sorting, no more begging. There is a performance by the Spirit. There is a performance. Come on, let's go. 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 Let's go.
beyond Nigeria. It's called grace. Hallelujah. As a family of faith, we will run corporately with a dimension of grace that will make many of you afraid. Can I tell you something? In the vision that the Lord showed me, I saw a lot of criticisms because a time came because of the performance of God. Some of you looking at me now even became skeptical and began to say, Kai, are we really sure that this level of increase and expansion is the hand of God? Some of you looking at me, that's why we are praying. Because you will see things that are beyond the manifestations of men. God will do it, even by His Spirit. Many of you, God will literally alter the state of your families. I mean, you are in a dunghill today, tomorrow you are in a palace. By the Spirit of God. In spite of the fact that it looks like there is turbulence around the nation. Can I tell you something? The agenda of God has not changed. This country is about to see the grace of God in a fearful way. I feel sorry for those who feel this country will be divided. There's no time I would have shown you in Isaiah 18. Nigeria, right there. Nigeria is in the Bible. It wasn't Lord Lugard that brought Nigeria together. It was a definite orchestration of the Spirit of God. And who shall speak a thing and it comes to pass when God has not declared it. But friends, our job tonight, or my job tonight is to stir up the spirit of faith in you. To understand that we are going to be operating principally in two dimensions of grace. One, the favor of God. This is the season when God will arise and have mercy upon his Zion. For the time, see let me tell you, the grace of God will restore things to many of you that you never believe you will get back. Restore years of tears. He said, and I will restore all the years, not some, all the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, the performance of the spirit. Times where you were delayed at home and couldn't go to school, there is a payback. The Lord Himself. Times when you would have compromised, you suffered for standing in for the truth. The Lord is about to roar from heaven and pour upon you grace. Great grace. For many of us in ministry who have been quietly building through the years, this is the year of the performance. Where the Lord Himself will pick you. Nobody will be able to shut any door against you. Because before you step in, God Himself will open the door. This is the year when we will call on one person and a nation will answer. You will watch unbelievers partner with the agenda of God in a way that you have never seen. With their, with their finance, with access, with endorsement, with everything. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Because the Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. The performance is only for them that believe. I've taken out time to soak it in my spirit. And I said, Lord, I believe. It's an awesome man and, and I'm excited about it. Hallelujah. I'll be sharing with us certain things that God shared with me as we continue. Two of them will shock you. One is the mystery of something the Bible calls the key of David. Two places in the Bible where God said something about the key of David. I began to say, what is it about the key of David? And then the blessings of Abraham. You know, many of us know the ble- No, 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 no. We are going to share on what the Bible calls the blessings of Abraham. And then you will understand by my revelation that outside of Abraham, everybody is an illegal occupant on the earth right now. 
Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Let's finish this scripture so we can round up. Second Peter 1, verse 2. Thank you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Are you ready? Are you there? Alright, let's read again. One to read. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How? Stop. How? So how is grace and peace multiplied? Through the knowledge. As you expose yourself to the revelatory knowledge of the Christ, you find out that you are walking in abundance of grace. Are you saying that it's not just the issue of claiming? There is knowledge that brings grace. Are you listening to me? He said, grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So there is a dimension of knowledge and understanding that causes grace to be multiplied in your life. Are you listening to me? There are things that God has shared with me over the last one month. I have cried like a baby and I kept laughing at myself. I felt so embarrassed when, you know, sometimes when people look at you and say, Kai, you are matured spiritually. When God began to open me up to truths, higher truths and greater lights of the kingdom, I just looked at myself and said, oh my God, can you imagine? The grace of God is multiplied according to the abundance of knowledge that is granted unto you. Hallelujah. So two people can see a challenge and one will walk through it as though nothing exists. And the other one will stand there. Say after me, knowledge. This is a time when you will brace up. I listened to all the ENI messages for last year. All. It was part of my retreat. I was listening to the man of God preaching and ministering to me. Are you listening to me? I listened to it. I soaked it. I prayed my life out. And I said, Lord, all the blessings that you have spoken through your servant last year, I receive it. There is a difference between judge the person and when the grace of God comes. When you know that difference, it will help you to know when you are a minister and when you are you. There are times that God will use the minister in you to speak to you. And if you know that difference, some of you will just be praying and suddenly the ministerial anointing will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy your solution by yourself. And if you do not have enough discernment to realize when the Spirit is upon you in power, you will miss out on several things. Are you following me now? And so this is a time of unlimited grace. Brothers and sisters, there is so much to do for the kingdom this year. We will be announcing some of our activities, but there is so much for the kingdom. I have this to tell you. Do not be surprised at whatever you see in your life and especially in this place. You are witnesses that we love God and we fear Him sincerely. But you are about to see a performance of divinity through men that will shock you. That will dwarf every accomplishment for the kingdom. You will see so winning strategies in a way that will shock you. Ways that we will win souls this year for the kingdom. Hallelujah. I prayed and I told God greater grace to be able to establish people in the truth. This year we are not interested in just doing ministry and coming on Friday and just getting excited. It's my goal this year that if anyone is picked at random, you can be able to represent the kingdom and speak in power and light. Where it is not just a select few. Are you following me now? I was so blessed hearing Abraham's testimony. The gentleman who shared the testimony here. Was a drug addict. Was into all kinds of things. But today is blood washed. Spirit filled. Loves the Lord. Winning souls. That's the kind of testimony. Where the least among us becomes as great as David. Doing great things for the kingdom. Let me tell you friends. God will be engaging everybody in this place this year. This is not the year to sit down and watch. For many of you, your ministry this year will start from Facebook. God will just commission you to start doing something on Facebook. Sending 
daily scriptures to people. Are you listening to me? Some of you, your ministry will start on what they call that thing that people can almost hit themselves on the wall because to go. Are you listening to me? Many of you, your ministry this year will be to be a link man between where there is revelation and where there is need for it. So prepare to embrace. It's not you must have a ministry, Joshua Selman International Ministry. A place of power and miracles. No. Then he said, that's my secretary, that's my PA. Mm -mm. It's going to be an engaging year. Are you listening to me? For many of you, God will give you the responsibility to begin to study on kingdom finances and go and hold a seminar for your father and mother and change their lives. For many of you, this will be the year where you have a project to make sure your paralyzed father is back on his feet. For many of you, God will engage you. You will pray fast and prepare yourself until your father gets born again. God will do for him what he did for Saul. He will drink juice and as he's going to the kitchen to keep the cup, he will see a light like Saul saw it. And God will say, you can't kick against the priest. It's time up. Are you listening to me? Renard Bonke calls it evangelism by fire. This is a year when you do a lot of things. Many of you will begin to write articles by the Spirit. The inspiration of the kingdom will come upon you. You will begin to write articles. Before you know it, a media house will call you. And see, this is a year of limitless possibilities. Doing great things for the kingdom. Many of you will begin to write tracts and translate it in Hausa. And send it to Funtua. Send it to places. We are not the kind of ministry that believes that people should sit down. We are the only one. No. Everybody. You are, we are the gifts that equip the ministers. Are you listening to me? This is the year when God will do surprising things. For many of you, this is the year when you begin to hold prayers for your class members. That's how you will start. You drag all of them plus the drunkards. Let's go to court. And then you pray and tell them Jesus loves you. The guy has been looking for you. He's always coming around you. And one day you say, okay, sit down. You get two chairs. And wash out Babylon out of him. And then when you do that, you tell him you are the first member of this class meeting. We are going to be meeting once a week and pray over our academics. You will be calling the people for the prayer. You are the one who will be giving you recharge card. Are you listening to me? For some of you, your ministry will be this year to go and speak to all the people who are all the market people that you go and buy something from. That every time you buy, you talk to them. I'm saying, this is a year when God is not just giving us grace to be rich and to be smiling because there's greater responsibility. Are you listening to me? Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. And then we are done. There will be a series of teachings this year. There will be many activities. Brace up yourself. Are you listening to me? Concerning the security situation in the country, I bring you a word of the Lord. All those who perpetrate evil in this country, their days are numbered. Their days are numbered. Are you listening to me? Their days are numbered. God is about to reveal himself in this country as the man of war. That man that Revelation said he rides upon a white horse. And out of his mouth a double-edged sword proceeds. People will sleep in this country and not wake up again. Without the interference of any man. The Lord of Sabaoth will arise by himself in this country. So I bring you a message of hope. Whether you live in Kano or Meduguri or Abuja or Kaduna. Fear not. Fear not. God is faithful. And God will help us. Are you listening to me? We are going to take 5 to 10 minutes to pray in the spirit in light of the prophetic word. And you are just going to pray and say you are positioning yourself. Are we ready to do that? Are you ready to do that? Hold your hands all over in this building. And let's begin to pray in the spirit. Labor of a
Come on, pray. We are aligning with prophecy. We provision our spirits. We provision our spirits. We Make sure you are praying to God. Make sure you are praying to I Hallelujah. Now listen. You're going to prophesy favor to all the 12 calendar months in your life this year. Are you listening? You're going to say from this meeting tonight, you are walking in on the, one of the things that will characterize our lives corporately is the fearful operation of the favor of God. You will hear testimonies of the grace and the favor of God. So we are praying right now for that dimension called favor. Are you ready to pray? Go ahead and speak. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. Ba 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 
Listen to me. Hallelujah. Many of us have been held back by certain mistakes of the past and challenges of the past. And every time God speaks a word like this, whenever we want to take steps, guilt brings us back. Can I tell you something? It's by the grace of God. The mercy of God speaks for you. Are you listening to me? This is not the year to allow Satan to speak to you and say you that last year you have been sleeping around from January to December. There is therefore now. Now. There was yesterday. There is therefore now. No condemnation. Are you listening to me? When Satan reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Satan's past is better than his future. Has a horrible life. That your best is behind you. And you know it. Hallelujah. And right around say, God, I need your enablement to go through this year. Listen. This is not the year when by February, what you used to believe and jump about in January suddenly becomes foolishness. There are many believers who start with vigor, but because we don't have the enabling grace and the staying power, when certain things just move against seemingly what the word of God says should be, many of us begin to waver. Hallelujah. But you are going to pray for enablement. Many of us in school are going to take courses. You know that because of the ASU strike, there's already a lag. And when you resume, there's going to be a lot of work. Many of us are in final year and you need to catch up with a lot of things. You need grace. Many of us are master students. Some of us are PhD students. You need enabling grace. Are you following me now? 
we need grace combining your academics with service and some of you are working and are doing other things grace you're going to say lord a supernatural enablement that i will do more than my bare hands can do lift up your voice and pray Rakatani Brigetos of Cotton, that supplies power that supplies beyond my human capacity. Ratana Brakato, power in Cotton, beyond your human capacity. Recotton, the power to speak, the power of the human Brakatala Brigade, the power of the Katala Brakata Brigade, the Brakatala 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 Grace not to be discouraged. Go ahead and pray. Grace not to be discouraged. Not as your future appears. Not as your reward. Not as your finances. Not as your life. Go ahead and pray. The Lord has refused to be discouraged. No matter what I see. Yes, grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. This is the year when we will stand as light. Are you listening to me? There's no more silence. There's no trying to be nice. No. This is the year where we will step out in light. And this is who we are. This is who we represent. This is what we carry. This is what we can do. Grace to say no. That even if a thousand people are saying yes to what is against the principles of God. You will stand and say no. Grace to face the crowd and say no. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Teaching us to say no. There is grace to say no. Everything cannot be yes in 2012. Many of us yet said yes to everything in 2011. And we landed into trouble. Grace. Grace to say no to your emotions when God wants to speak to you. And you are tired. Many of us will need to stay awake for hours and sleep only a few times. It takes grace, otherwise we'll break down. There's grace. It's not the year to get sick. There's too much work to be done. Are you listening to me? It's not the year to sit and negotiate with Satan. And say, okay, Satan, let's, let me rest in January. You can, no! No matter how mad a man is, he knows what fire is. No matter how mad a man is, he knows what fire is. I've never seen a madman go near fire in the name of madness. 
as mad as he is, his, his, his senses, his neurons are still working. He goes near fire. The Bible says he maketh his angels, uh, spirits, and his ministers flames of fire. It's not the time to sit down and organize prayer sessions for Satan. We will stamp on him and move. There's work to be done. There's work to be done. Are you listening to me? Somebody calls you and says, I'm just announcing to you that this year will be a bad year. Tell him thank you. I feel sorry for you. And you will not even pray about it. You go and concentrate and do something better. This is a year where you hear you have a dream. And in dream you see that every member of your family died. And you get up and say, Lord, I give you thanks. You are more than worthy to be praised. And you just continue your work. No depression whatsoever. This is the year where someone looks at you and says you are good for nothing. Tell him, you, your words doesn't really matter in my destiny. Just have a nice day. I'm not offended. You can have a glorious day. Not that me. I will talk to you. You are above. Anybody that tries to tell you, just say, I'm above. I'm too serious. I'm too focused on the things above to distract myself with the things that are below. Are you listening to me? This is not the year to start talking and say, hey, people are saying this. Have you heard people are saying, what is your... You, you are, there is work to be done. Are you listening to me? Father, we thank you for this year. It's a season of great grace and glory. We will accomplish more for the kingdom this year than we have all through our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In one minute, I'd like you to just pray for Koinonia this year. Pray for the house. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, accomplishments. Pray for the ministers. Pray in grace. Pray that we teach truth in righteousness. No perversion of truth. Pray for grace. As we travel all around the country, pray for grace. Pray for all the people who will be coming. Pray for the hundreds and thousands who will be saved this year. Who will be healed this year. Pray for all our miracle services. Lord, we have seen your hand last year. Greater manifestations. This is the year when, when you invite someone for the miracle service. Before he arrives, God will use your hand to work the miracle for him. He will just come to testify. Pray. Pray against the spirit of destruction. Go ahead and pray. Pray against the spirit of deception. Pray against error that will teach the truth of Christ with accuracy and power pray for transformation go ahead and pray say Lord we pray for every single one that there will be true transformation that will not just be doing church will not just be doing religion but that will truly be growing conforming to the image and the character of Christ and manifesting his grace and glory even in our daily lives Pray for all our projects, accomplishments by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hopefully by next week or in two weeks' time, we'll announce officially the activities we have for the year. Hallelujah. I'd just like you to brace up and um, use this time. The school, you know, as a believer, you can make everything work out for your good. Is that correct? There are many people who have maximized the ASU strike. And it has been a great ladder for them spiritually. Are you following me? We pray that soon enough the federal government will get into reasonable negotiations with ASU. Hallelujah. But while that is happening, use the opportunity. Before assignments and other things begin to come. Are you listening to me? Eat for the journey is far. Now is the time to get books. Now is the time to settle down. Are you listening to me? Many of us are around, there's not much that we are doing in the day. You can hang around in the night, you can go to your rooms, share the word together, build yourself, explore grace. Hallelujah. A major book I'd like you to read this year is um, Unmerited Favor by Joseph Prince. If you can get a hold of it, Unmerited Favor by Joseph Prince. It's going to be a major book that will help you. The Emergence of the Glorious Church, Bishop David Oedeko. 
the emergence of the glorious church. Hallelujah. And any kingdom series by Dr. Miles Munro, anyone, really, just anyone will bless you. Anyone by Dr. Miles Munro will bring some other books as, as the months go by, but you can start with these two books. Very, very powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.